And just that Craig shows up and he's like, hey guys, so what's up? And he starts drinking his juice and she's like, did you get my dad fired? And I just wanted him to drink the juice for the rest of the movie. <laughs> just so he didn't have to answer that question. Craig, you're you're eventually going to finish the juice and have to answer the question. Okay. <laughs> spitting it back into the glass? No, no, you're spitting no, it back into the glass. I'm just really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because my wife won't be satisfied until I have genetically engineered an actual baby Yoda money. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's going to be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Valentine's Day-tacular! And what could be more romantic, honestly, <laughs> than, well... <laughs> I've got an intro written out. Let me just go ahead and read this one. We're also excited to welcome a returning guest masochist. She's musical. She's hilarious. She's pregnant and therefore easily nauseated. And Eli asked her to watch this movie anyway. Anna Bosnick. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Noah. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. You, you know, Valentine's Day is my anniversary and I'm going to spend it at a platinum night for a live show. My wife's thrilled. Oh, I bet she is. Oh, you said you wanted to go out to a nice restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so real nice. This was all the hell way in L.A., baby. This is a big deal. <laughs> all right. So tell us, Anna, what will we be breaking down today? God, who the fuck knows? Right? This movie, it depends on who you ask. It really does. It depends on... This movie isn't sure what time it came out. It isn't sure what it's called. Or who's in it. God, it's got two different titles. But according to Prime, which we watched it on, Belle and the Beast, A Christian Romance. It's the story of a woman being turned into an unpaid servant by a guy who thinks she's less valuable than a vase. So, yeah. It's a Christian romance. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Beauty and the Beast, but you hate beauty the concept, <laughs> you will love this movie. Look, there have been a lot of retellings of Beauty and the Beast. Some good, some bad. I'm going to venture that this is the first retelling that I think fails to tell the story of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. honestly, if it wasn't for the giveaway title, there'd be no indication that's what they were basing us on at all. Mm -mm. No. All right, so I want to say up front, I know that the, like, you know, play Mozart for your fetus and it'll get smarter thing is nonsense, and obviously you guys are banking on it being <laughs> nonsense here. <laughs> but if it wasn't, what do you think, what do you think, you guys just did to your unborn child. I mean, oh, God, oh. my baby kicked me more times during this movie <laughs> than I think <laughs> any of the other ones I've ever sat beside Eli while he is watching. <laughs> like, it's crazy. I turned to Eli. I was like, I am not the only one who doesn't like this movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, spoiler alert for later in the movie, but I think our baby learned some pretty sweet karate skills. That's right. <laughs> spoiler alert. Oh, my God. That's totally what it was. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I guarantee you the star of this film had I will show off my sweet karate skills and I will punch through sugar glass in his goddamn contract. That's, Multiple he did, times. He didn't want to be paid. He came to him and he's like, you know what? You guys don't have to pay me all I want. All I really need in life <laughs> this is, is to show off my sweet Muay Thai clench. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, my God. There's so much to choose from. I'm going to say best worst concept of dates. Dates like, like as in going on a date. No, as in going out, where people think that going out means literally just going outside to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, outdoor shot counts as a date in this movie. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yep. You're right, actually. 
In fact, throughout the movie, people do stuff outdoors that you wouldn't want to do outdoors. And it's in perpetually winter in this town, apparently. So, like, uh, it's just it's stupid. Yeah, no, actually, like, you know, best worst understanding of outside would also <laughs> yeah, be a good nominee. that would be a very, yep, yep. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> Interestingly enough, I'm going to go with best worst understanding of inside in in a sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. So very clearly part of this movie is getting good video of this mansion that is probably for sale. Right. They rented this mansion and the person was like, OK, but I want good video of every single room. So like we will for no reason at all, we'll have scenes that take place in the garage and in the <laughs> hot tub, in the fucking helps kitchen and shit. They'll be like, mm, why are we in this stand, this fucking walk in closet right now? I was like, oh, right. Uh, the hanging thing. Spacious. See, judging by the mix of like decor, I was assuming that this was multiple different hotel lobbies that they were shooting in. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know what? Your idea makes more sense. Yeah. Also, we'll never forget hot tub room. We'll get to oh, it, but we will never forget oh, hot God. tub room. <laughs> Ever. It's, it's imprinted in my memory. <laughs> See, I was going to go with best worst villain comeuppance. Oh. So, uh, s spoiler oh, yeah. alert, the villain of this movie is a serial killer-esque level stalker yep. who gets <laughs> yep. the protagonist's dad fired and his comeuppance will be a shove. Yep. I don't know <laughs> that this movie knows that this movie's villain is a villain. There's like a 40 to 50 percent chance in my mind that if I asked these writers, they'd be like, I mean, you know, Craig's heart is in the right place. Show yep. up at someone's house to yep. ask him on a yeah. date. Yep. Yeah, man, it's me too, the person. But this was filmed in <laughs> 1998. So, you know, yeah, they didn't know back then. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, I was I was actually shocked by the end of it when it was like, OK, they do know he's he's not the good guy, right? Like, cause for a long time it played, like he might be the love interest. Like the story might actually be about her eventually, like stopping being such a bitch and going out with him. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. We've seen movies that were yes. like that. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> 235 Christian movies later, you never assume the weird guy who shows up at your house is the bad guy. Yeah. Right. He's, amateur <laughs> talk. he's not the love interest. <laughs> Particularly if it's him or the rich guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So, well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of petulant misogyny to come. And since Eli's been off Twitter for a while, he's not prepared for that stuff. He's going to need a quick break while he steals his nerves. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the petulant misogyny that is Belle and the Beast, a latter day Christian romantic tale. Okay, ready. Do you have the jelly bean? For the last time, yes, I have the jelly bean. <sighs> okay. Go. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a boat. Hey, goes, guys, I'm, I'm really sorry that I have to ask this, but what are you guys doing? Noah, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah, I guess that's a good question. In, in the world of this show, we all live in the same house, which mm -hmm. admittedly feels way weirder with, with you involved. Yeah, especially considering I'm pregnant now. You're like Yoko Ono. Yeah, oh, yeah Anna is way more talented than Yoko Ono. That's true. I'm sorry. I forgive you. A a anyway, uh, what are you guys doing? I'm trying to keep Eli in good dental habits. By bribing him with candy and singing a song while he brushes? Yep. Yeah. Why don't you just try Quip? What's Quip? Well, Quip makes good dental habits simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Does it have Mickey Mouse? I I don't know if it has Mickey Mouse, but Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping. So your routine is always right. That does sound really good. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill for free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Okay, you're good. <laughs> Jelly bean. Here. <clears throat> Yuck, mint again. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of brushing? Yeah, it would if it wasn't just frozen toothpaste. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Mint again. 
All right, everyone, welcome to the first writer's meeting of Beauty and the Beast, a Christian romance. Or Bell and the Beast, a Latter-day Tale. Yes, yes. Or Bell and the Beast, a Latter-day Tale, in case this movie thing doesn't work out. Um, either way, hit me. Hit you? Not visit like with ideas for the oh. for the movie. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, it's just the story of Beauty and the Beast, right? Right. Right, totally. Well, I have seen that movie. Mm. Uh, so so someone else uh, can go first, I think. <laughs> you know what? I I um I've also seen the movie so many times. So many. Someone else right, yeah. someone else should go first, just that isn't me cuz I've seen it. Wow. Yeah. So much. Uh, seriously? Uh, okay. So, it's about this girl. Who's Christian? Helping. Helping. Yeah, she's Christian. Yeah, she's Christian, sure. Um, And her father is kidnapped by a prince who's been turned into a beast. Which, in our version, will be extorted by an ex-alcoholic. Mm-hmm. How are those two things similar? <laughs> They're both... Mean. They are. Both mean. Yeah, both mean. Jesus. Yes. Lots of him. Uh, anyway, so they fall in love, and this guy from the town gathers up a mob to kill the beast. Oh, wait. Uh, in our version, who's the guy from town? Oh, so his name is Gaston, and he's super pushy and gross. Yeah, it sounds to me like he just really likes Belle. Yeah, I mean, really, why was Belle wearing that anyway? Great point. That's a great Again, point. Again, what? Never mind. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, at the end, she kisses him and he turns back into a human. Christian. Great. Okay. Well, that's our movie. Uh, now, on to serious stuff. What's our third backup title in case this doesn't work out? Ooh, how about please, 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 please watch this? I oh love God. it. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a logo that makes you just instinctively think, oh, this app is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> Wizen quest, motherfucker. Oh, brought to you by the fact that two-thirds of Amazon Prime is just verbose YouTube, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, yeah. God, we're like, we, we, the, by, by the, the logo I've already given up, and then the music starts, it's so goddamn boring. Oh, Ugh. my God. They were trying to go for the actual Disney movie music or something like it, because it's like this be this little piano line that sort of kind of sounds like the music from mm -hmm. the beginning of it. It's it's not. How dare they? Basically, how dare they try to imitate that award winning fucking soundtrack? Yeah, it's the Chinatown Gucci knockoff of that soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, with not even a real piano. <laughs> with just like a piano track on a keyboard. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, ugh. Ugh. All right. So we start off, on, we got this narrator, right? Because we have to, we desperately have to tell people that this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Otherwise, they wouldn't notice. So we start <laughs> off on this narrator going like, once upon a Time. There lived the prettiest girl in our Christian acting class and a guy who <laughs> had a pretty good set of abs on him. So we made a fucking movie. By the way, this is accompanied by the uh, drone work done by Kobe Bryant's helicopter pilot. <laughs> oh, God, like, dude. It's very much going for, like, sweeping views of Utah or wherever the... Yeah, but it's it's just <laughs> nauseating. Yeah, it's exactly. dropping and flying up. <laughs> hits a tree. We watch them fish it out. <laughs> also, just want to say, we get a vision oh. of uh, Belle's car here. Bell, oh. exact same car as Heath Enright. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, and this movie originally was made in the nineteen in nineteen ninety eight, and they're like, there was a beautiful girl named Bell. She loved her family. She loved God. And I gotta say, anybody named Bell in the nineties, any family that named their daughter Bell in the nineties, does not deserve their daughter's love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a rough one. <laughs> so yeah, and, and so we introduce her. And yes, she's very Christian and loves Jesus a ton. And then we introduce this angry rich guy who everyone in town, he's so angry and bitter that everyone in town calls him the beast. Yeah. And in between that aerial shot and this shot, someone has slathered the lens in Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the first hotel lobby shot that we get. Yeah. The first... <laughs> 
of many. Oh, of many. All right, so so it's time for us to meet the beast, and he's he's bitching at this poor old lady that he has. She's his his maid, cook, servant, mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Who is either Mrs. Hagen or Mrs. Haywood? I think it changes throughout. It's the it's Mrs. Actually, it's neither. It's Mrs. Haygood. Uh, Haygood. At, yeah, at least okay. according to IMDb that and and the All credits right. at the end, it's Mrs. Haygood. And he's like immediately like with the very first scene of the movie proper, she slides him over what looks like a pretty damn good breakfast. And he just goes, that looked like an awesome breakfast that made me like I need bacon right now. And I saw that. Yeah, right. It had like there were four slices of bacon. There was some fruit with some like compote shit going on over here. There was Mm -hmm. some eggs. Looked great. He goes, what the fuck is this? I want this. And then he storms off. Yeah, he eats like a two-year-old just loading up on carbs. He literally wants a bag. He's like, no, don't want protein. Want Cheerios. <laughs> Honestly, don't want X, want Y. It just completely sums yeah. up his entire act one character. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, the clothes in his closet are brought to you by uh, the designer from Night at the Roxbury, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a fabric in this guy's closet that does not shine. <laughs> nope, not at all. I just, because he keeps, like, throughout the whole movie, he keeps bitching at Mrs. Hagen. I wanted so bad to find out, like, the, the act three twist is that that's his mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> his last name is Hagen. But no, it's, anyway, yeah. So, so and like she's and they have to do this like four times so that you really get that he's an asshole right so she's like here's your breakfast she's like well here's your newspaper she's like fuck you I don't even like this paper she's like um just a reminder the fireplace repairman's come by fuck you why would I want to know about my fireplace <laughs> right like over and over again yeah there's also this amazing moment as he exits the scene where she goes oh Eric what do you need solitude for and I wrote in my notes me to Heathen right <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna cut in to a dentist office where we meet two uh, women, one of whom is the girl from Passage to Zarahemla. Ooh, what? I, yeah, it, it's one of is, the. Wait, is Anna play that character? No, not Anna. The the oh. main character, Belle. Oh, really? The chick with the dimples you could fuck. Sorry. That I could fuck. I can't really speak for anybody else. But like, yeah, but I, I knew I recognized her from somewhere. I looked at her up on IMDb, and yes, she has been in a Christian movie before. She is a Mormon Christian actor. And uh, yeah, we, we first met and her Mormon. when she was like 16 or something, playing uh, the love interest in Passage to Zara Oh, Hemlock. my goodness. Yeah, and hey, I'll say it. Her career has gone exactly the same hill. Yeah. Not uphill, <laughs> not downhill. <laughs> Straight hill. She invents the straight hill career. It was a plateau. Yeah. No, we, 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 uh, and, and I think it ended after this movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this dentist's office. All right. She, they are dressed like dental hygienists. This mm-hmm. is the first where I'll be like, okay, cool. She's got, but, but I'm talking about her doing homework tonight. So like, okay, cool. So she's going back to school to maybe become an actual dentist instead of a dental hygienist, right? Because she must have already had some medical training if she's a dental hygienist. I will be wrong about every assumption I make Mm -mm. about this woman. Oh, my God. Her educational pathway is so baffling. (laughs) It makes no sense. She she must be like 34 and have had seven false starts and shit (laughs) in her career or something. Yeah, I have no fucking idea. She's got like a Cecil level education. It's weird. (laughs) (laughs) And and by the way, and just when you thought that this Christian movie was going to pass the Bechdel test, the two of them are just talking about, oh, you sure work very hard. And yeah, I'm going back to school, blah, blah, blah. Then at the very end, they reveal that the entire point of the conversation is that one of the girl's male cousin is interested in the other one. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. She's like, please go on a date with my cousin. He could tie his shoes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but she is not interested. No, not. She is not. And by the way, this is quite literally all that these two characters will speak about is, do you want to fuck my cousin now? It's like a new Verizon commercial. <laughs> it's all anybody wants to talk about with Belle because she's like, oh, yeah, no, I got homework. And they're like, why would you want an education? You have a vagina. Fill it. Yes, <laughs> like, right. Right. And that is virtually every character's assessment of her upon meeting her. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we, we cut over back to rich guy. Uh, he's at his house. There, There's a guy there fixing his fireplace and he's yelling at his assistant who he then fired. 
Rose, right? He's all angry at her for fucking up the big thing, <laughs> the businessing. Yep. Right. And they do that weird movie trope where it's like, you're fired. You can't fire me. I quit. And <laughs> I, I have never understood that in movies, but he has the weirdest take of it at all, where he's like, I'm not going to pay you for the last few weeks because that's how quitting works. <laughs> yeah, he acts. Well, he acts like a the, he, we were talking about before. He acts like a grumpy two year old, like he is seconds away in the end of the scene from stamping his feet and holding his breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. OK, so she storms off the assistant. She gets fired or quits or whatever, or storms off. And then just then the poor fireplace repairman accidentally knocks over a vase. <gasps> oh, see, at this point in my notes, I'm like, oh, well, luckily, electricians tend to have insurance for that shit. I mean, I was a fiddle teacher. And right. I wasn't, I was covered for breaking something in someone's fancy right. penthouse. Yes, so like, exactly. oh yeah, it'll be this fine. Is, He'll just do this. Yeah. But oh, little do I know. No, not in this. <laughs> they don't have shit like that in this universe. <laughs> no. Apparently, because Eric immediately screams at him, do you know how much this is worth? It's worth more than your life. And I just wrote in my notes, I measure stuff in lives. <laughs> yes, yes. This, is, this face was worth more than the lives of mere mortals. Well, then why'd you have it just sitting on that fucking pillar, you idiot? <laughs> so, and then, and then, because again, this movie, this insuranceless universe that they live in, I don't know what the fucking rules are here. He goes, I'm going to call your boss and get you fired for knocking over my face. Like, that is not how any fucking job works. But the, everyone in the movie will act from that point on like, well, yeah, no, he does have that right. He can invoke the get you fired for breaking his face card at any time. It's true. Yeah, and at this point, he says, well, this is broken now. I had a gross breakfast. I fired my thing. I, you just, I've ruined my day. And it's all your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He also yes. threatens to call the police, and I really wanted that to happen. Just like, hello, police. Someone here accidentally broke something of mine. What do you mean stop calling here? I am not a tattletale. You're a tattletale. I'm a very supposed to sell me the toothbrush at the price that's on the box. <laughs> Didn't have a receipt on it. That means it's free. <laughs> What I, I love, too, that the way that they set the stakes up for this, he goes, I'm going to call your boss tomorrow morning and have you fired. It's like, why not just why now? Not right now? <laughs> because it's obviously this is working it's hours. Light outside. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've got a busy day today, but tomorrow between <laughs> nine and nine thirty that in right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, OK, then we cut to what we eventually realize is that guy's family which includes Dimple Girl, Belle. And that's how stupid this fucking movie is. I had her down as Dimple Girl because I'd forgotten the character's name. She's in the title. Anyway, Belle One is... One of the titles. Right, right. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> One but not the other. So, yeah, she is the oldest daughter of the fireplace repairman, and he also has two younger kids. So we're meeting all of them, but at first... We think that she's the mom. I was like, I had to delete so goddamn many notes when I realized what the dynamic of this family was. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just need to point uh. this out. Someone appears to be making tea in the background of this scene <laughs> at the full volume of anything else in this scene. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of audio notes as we go forward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone might as well just be saying Lulu Lu not controlling the Foley stuff. Not controlling the Foley <laughs> stuff is my favorite stuff. Well, we also meet her younger siblings in this scene. Mm. And I don't know why this is a universal thing in all bad movies, let alone Christian movies. It's the younger brother always hates his older sisters. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always. And and this one, who appears to be, like, 14 years old, is doing, like, stupid stuff like, hey, why are you copying yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Like, it's, it's <laughs> this movie doesn't understand how ages work. His entire personality is, why are you repeating me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's his entire goddamn, yeah, everything that he does in the film. It's two out of his three lines. The, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then uh, dad explains to his oldest daughter that he's going to get fired because the guy's going to call tomorrow morning about the vase, which is how things work in this universe, right? 
Yeah, over dinner, which uh, appears to be red jello. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> It's a Christian thing. They love that stuff. Uh, yeah. They, they put so much shit in their jello, those Christians. It's so fucking weird. They probably just have, that's probably that's like, let's have hamburgers and it's like encased in red jello. I mean, yeah. It's some shit in there. Yeah. Jello hamburger. All right. So, so then a bell says that his, his 25, 23, whatever year old daughter says, I'll tell you what, dad, let me see what I can do. I'll go over to that rich guy's house tonight and see if I can save your job. Yeah, father figure in her life says, please go over to a strange entitled man's mansion in the middle of the night and ask for my job back. And do That's whatever it takes insane. to get my job back. Yes. This is one of the many times that I'll be like, that is a bad dad. <laughs> right. Well, this is one of the many times that I will say, this is a porn setup. Oh, <laughs> definitely. Many times that we will say that. Right. Like in any other movie like that's that would just be code for she's going to go over there and blow him. Yep. Right? yep. And honestly, yep. through the whole movie, I'm thinking to myself, she should have just blown him. <laughs> Dude, it would have been. Uh, I have a note about it later. Let's get to yeah. it. <laughs> we'll get to it. Yeah. My active theory for this entire film is that this was going to be a porn. And then the protagonist's mom walked on set and she was like, oh, th this movie. Oh, Chris, you're here. <laughs> um, it's called Beauty and the Beast. It's a, a Christian <laughs> romance. And this movie is just made of the afternoon they had to fake it wasn't a yeah. porn <laughs> while mom was there. She was like, man, you guys keep a lot of lotion for the actors. Yep. Well, yep, you know, they get, <laughs> actors, they, get itchy. they get real itchy, ma. All right. So, yeah. All right. So she drives back up. She goes over to the dude's mansion. She goes to the little buzzer thing. She goes to the gate and she's like, yeah, I would like to uh, bother the head of the household at 11 o'clock at night. You don't know me. And she's like, yeah, come on in. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, the the housekeeper is there at 11 o'clock at night. So mm -hmm. she must be yeah. a live in housekeeper. And yep. second of all, she just let a stranger on the premises who has a perfectly valid motive for murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I don't understand. What's the point of a security gate? If you don't know me, but I'm here to talk to your boss is what it takes to get in. Just save yourself the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so she, she the, and the lady, not only does she let her in, but she says, yeah, he's somewhere on the property. Just wander around back until you come across him. I'd be so funny because like she shows up and he goes, what the fuck are you doing on my property? And I'm like, yeah, it, it's not a fucking park. Like, I mean, this guy's been an asshole about everything, but suddenly it's justified. <laughs> so, judging by actually the set, it was absolutely a fucking park. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> he is sitting outside in the cold at 11 o'clock at night on a bench. Yep. Must be very comfortable. Like you do. Like you do. Well, I will just say, Christ. this is the first of many times where we will realize this movie has no idea what unmarried people do. Like this... <laughs> Spoiler alert. Or married people. This doesn't, they don't have any idea what people do. <laughs> yeah, but this movie is pretty sure that all single people do is like sit in various locations and play two player games by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and so she explains she's there about the vase and there's this fantastic line that I really wanted them to go deeper on. He goes, do you know what fine art costs? And I want to know what the people who wrote this movie think fine art costs. <laughs> I went to the Hallmark store for that vase. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they only had that one at the Cracker that was Barrel. It. That was what they had. That was so, the <laughs> I love. OK, so and then. OK, here's my reading of this movie. And this is so much more fun than this goddamn movie's reading of itself. She went over there with the intention of just blowing him. Mm -hmm. He didn't get it. <laughs> Right. So he's like, all right, fine. If you want to save your father's job, then you can be my new assistant and you will work for me unpaid until I feel that the dentist would pay. And that's the plot of the movie. And I I would love the idea of like it just being like she's like, I just thought I'm I would fuck you. Oh, this would have been so much simpler. It would be over in literally <laughs> so five minutes. So much better. <laughs> all right. But but so he yeah, he sentences her to be his butler. <laughs> and then, and she's like, "Well, you know, I already actually have a job, and I and I go to college." And she's like, "Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. That's the whole she plot." She puts her older brother through college as well as her two 
younger siblings as well as her dad who can't yeah. seem to make dinner for himself. I'm sorry. This whole this movie is just it's like a family who puts everything on her. Yeah. Through the entire thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. And it's a Christian movie, so we can never actually acknowledge that that family is being shitty by expecting her to do all of that. Yep. All right. So now we're back at her dentist job and her friend, Anna, wants her. You know, this is the one that wanted her to go out with her cousin, Craig, and she has to turn him down. Now, she's like, well, sorry, I can't go to the thing that I was going to go to with you and your cousin because I got sentenced to be a butler. Yeah, she's like, it's a long story, but I was basically sold into slavery because my father doesn't work for an employer with insurance. And now I have to work (laughs) off the price of this priceless vase, which would probably actually be so much easier if you just fuck me and be done with it. But instead, I'm going to do about like six months worth of emotional labor for him and teach him like basic kindergarten social skills (laughs) and probably get Stockholm syndrome (laughs) for him at some point along the way, you know? (laughs) Like you do. (laughs) Like you do. (laughs) <laughs> so and then oh and this is where we uh, first meet Craig right the cousin oh, that wants to yeah. date her. The fact that the cousin looks like gritty is a downside. See, I have him. <laughs> I had Craig as poor man Steve O, but the, that says a lot because Steve O is poor man Steve O. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. And so she she says, yeah, I gotta go. I've got to do my secret slave job now. And he walks in just as she's walking out and he goes like, was it something I said or is it just the fact that my face can only be described with insects references? It's weird because what he said was, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you said is, hey, right. so probably not something you said. <laughs> no, it's your it's it's your it's the way you look, man. It's your visage. It's your whole <laughs> your whole thing. So, yeah. OK, she shows up to be a, an assistant at the Beast's house. And I just want to say, this is a quote-unquote mansion, and if reviewing 235 Christian movies has taught me anything, it's the terrifying idea of what Christians think nice and fancy mean. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah. Yeah, she's greeted by the housekeeper who looks like every single woman I've ever met at a church gig. (laughs) 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 It's a yeah, it looks like somebody calls everyone dearie unironically. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Shows you where the coffee is and where to stand. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a Mormon production. There was no goddamn coffee. But yes. Oh, I don't think it was a Mormon production originally. I think it was a Christian production originally. And then it turned into a Mormon when, the, when they realized they couldn't fucking sell it in 1996. Yeah, Mormons think they're Christians. It's it a weird. It's released whole... <laughs> under a Latter-day Tale in 2007. I know this because I hate myself, apparently. And I was so I had to figure it out. Oh, also, also, the guy who plays the Beast, he's in a band. And he what? has a youth. There are multiple music videos you can watch from his band. We watched a lot oh, of Roddy YouTube. Punchy Man is in a band? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in a band and some of them have plots. They're really, really <laughs> bad. It's amazing. Like, one of them, he's a fashion photographer. Anyway, it's, it's like this, <laughs> this whole thing. Sorry. I, I digress. <laughs> All right. I, do yourself a favor and look up Matthew Reese on, in, on YouTube. Would we call it a favor? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so she shows up at his thing to be the uh, assistant they have the argument about whether her name means beauty or the thing that goes ding-a-ling-a-ling when you shake it it's (laughs) everything about this is so fucking stupid also during this scene the music is pretty sure he just told her she's dying of cancer on general hospital (laughs) i don't know why (laughs) well she seems to be confused about the concept of running errands as his assistant yeah. What does she think assistants do? <laughs> right. Right. He's like, here, I have some errands for you to run. She goes, oh, <laughs> what did you? Uh, OK. Errands? Again, Noah's theory makes perfect sense to you. She was like, oh, OK, you don't want to fuck me now. You want to do some oh, weird secretary yeah. role play. And then she shows up and he's like, dry cleaning. And she's like, this is weird foreplay. Yeah. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's a weird scene. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so she comes back with the dry cleaning and he tells her to put it in the closet. So she wanders around the house looking for a closet with suits in it. Like <laughs> she is an idiot, mm. right? Yep. <laughs> well, this is the part where I was like, OK, so they're going for like the Beauty and the Beast scene where she's like running, wandering around and trying to find the East Wing where he keeps his enchanted rose that makes him more of, I guess, a nozzle every time a petal falls off. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I was just hopefully 
a mahogany side table will anthropomorphize and start singing to her or some shit this because I need something yeah. to get me through. See, I was hoping she was accidentally going to stumble across this fabulous multi-room drag wardrobe and this movie would oh, have me back. So yeah, God, we all had dreams. Would- yeah, we all but, dreams. But what was actually happening is we needed to see the walk-in closets <laughs> in this very lovely mansion that they rented. Yep. And the room with the Bible in it. Oh, yeah. no, it's not a rose. <laughs> it's a Bible. And I will say this. There is a giant menorah on the hearth behind the room with the Bible in it. And I just had this moment where I was like, they know that's a menorah, right? And then I was like, wait, no, they don't. They don't. Because there were some Christian prop designers that obviously went saw some ironwork menorah, like Art Nouveau men- menorah at Pier 1. And they were like, ooh, Deborah, look, fancy candelabra. Yes. You can fit nine whole candles, yes. Deborah. Imagine being so fancy you own nine candles. <laughs> <laughs> I was th- I was thinking of the same thing as I saw. I was like, they don't even know, do they? They're just they're all the fucking way out in Utah. They have no goddamn idea. And I was like, please let the menorah start singing. But also, <laughs> <laughs> but also, he wants a bagel earlier instead of his breakfast. And there's a menorah. I'm like, what if he's Jewish? What if this is like a <laughs> got an Ebenezer Scrooge situation going on? Yeah, absolutely. I had a I had a whole fan theory that didn't play out, and I'm really sad it didn't. And okay, so yeah, so she's looking around trying to figure out where to put the suits. And then he catches her, you know, just poking around his fucking house like she just won it in a raffle or something. And he's like, hey, you know, Mrs. Haygood was here. I was on the phone, but you could have asked her where the fucking suits go. She lives here. (laughs) She's the other person in this house. Jesus fucking Christ. So he, she, he walks her to the closet. They put up that we see that this. Oh, this has got a lot of lovely space there. You could really you could do a lot with this. This could be a small office, too, if you wanted. Anyway, so then they go back downstairs. And so, I don't know, sometime later, Mrs. Haygood comes in to tell him that she's baked pie to, to cut the tension, I guess. I want a Mrs. Haygood in my house. And I love this scene because Eric is trying to be an asshole, but like. His character doesn't work for it. And she's like, you want some pie, dearie? And he's like, fuck. You- oh, yes, I would like some pie. Sorry, <laughs> yes. <'cause I'm> normal. <laughs> well, I love it because in the background beforehand, we just watch for a very long time. Belle very suggestively licking these envelopes, thinking like, <laughs> like as though she said, no, see, what I had in mind is that I just blow you when I came over here. I didn't want to get sucked into a goddamn 70s sitcom premise, but OK. <laughs> but at the same time, he's like, "Ooh, pie. And she's like, fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> I wasn't even putting anything in these envelopes. Never mind. So I so wanted to find out later, like to find that the the twist ending is that Mrs. Haygood's dad broke a mirror in that house when he was hanging drywall 40 years ago or something. Well, we don't get that anyway, but she's made them pie. Yep. And he's like, organize my books and don't talk. (laughs) All right. So anyway, she's working for Eric Moore. Right, we have to see what a dick he is. He's like, go get me a phone number. And she gets the phone number and he goes, is this is the wrong phone number? And she has to go get another one, right? Well, yeah. he says, no, it's a different one. It's on the credenza. Yeah, I. so I could have swarm he said cadenza. And I round it and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah, bud, maybe it's in the giant solo in the middle of the symphony. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure. But I rewound it and I was so disappointed. He oh, it was. Like that, he so. got it right. See, I wanted him to keep naming more and more obscure furniture that the number could be on. He's like, no, the cravat hanger. What are you doing? The ottoman. No, not that ottoman. The Swedish ottoman. The new Dutch one. <laughs> I'd just like to thank Google for weird furniture resulting in <laughs> lots of words I could use for that joke. Oh, just good to know. <laughs> oh, also, this is where we first see that he likes to play basketball by himself when he's not oh, my God. sitting out in the cold. I wanted him to be doing the announcer voice also in like the sound of like, yeah, she shoots, he's going, wow, the crap is wild. Yeah. Yeah. And they just like, has to like run off into the bushes and get it again so he can do it. All right. So now we have Belle at home. She's 
studying in her Bible when Insect Man shows up to see if she'd like to go on a surprise date. Does that work? Surprise dating? That seems like a dumb fucking idea. This movie seems to think that well-intentioned guys will just show up at your house being like, hey, want to go out? Yeah, that's it. That's how they seem to think it works. Yeah. So he says, you want to go out for ice cream? And she plays along. She's like, yeah, sure. I guess I will go with uh, you for ice cream. Yeah, I'd like a change of pace. What going out for ice cream means in this guy's head is going outside to the porch and, oh, have some Ben and Jerry's that I already went to the store for. I picked out your flavor. You don't even get to pick out your own goddamn Ben and Jerry's flavor. Yes, I didn't even and- give you the choice of the two that I had. <laughs> and then later he takes some of hers without asking. Well, and what he had ice cream in his pocket. right? <laughs> what was he going to do if she said no? Would he just sit on her porch and eat both of them? Himself? Sit on her porch and eat both of them. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's episodes like this where we need Heath on the line to tell us what he would have done in this situation. <laughs> Sit on the porch and eat both of them, I can tell you. <laughs> or just go inside to eat your ice cream. There is snow on the ground. Yeah. Why do you want ice cream in the fucking snow? <laughs> oh, oh so And stupid. also, I got a point. This goddamn actor's hairline is receding so fast <laughs> that you can, like, you can tell, like, between scenes, it's receded fat further, right? You can see. <laughs> See it happening. Yeah. He just gets a tattoo of four hymns on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our listeners say, but guys, it's a pretty good deal, man. Uh, all right. <laughs> so she shows back up at um, at the mansion for work and, and Mrs. Haygood says, and, and this is Mrs. Haygood will do an awful lot of this. Like every time Belle asks for him, she'll say like he'll be in a different room. Right. So this time she goes. Oh, you should find you'll find him in the hot tub room, dearie. <laughs> she says no. the spa, the spa room. Oh, the spa room. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. And by the way, the people who made this movie think a spa is just a, a room tub. with a hot tub. <laughs> and also, by the way, like not a room that seems like a hot tub should go in it, like a fucking library that you just set a hot tub in the middle of. It's so yep. weird. Right next to the, literally right next to the library that you, obvi- you know what's good for books? Steam. <laughs> Steam. Hot <laughs> water. Yes. Hot, hot water. Having water around. Real good for books. <laughs> anyway, so like, you'll go find him in the spa room. And I was like, Eli, this is the longest intro to a porn you've ever made me watch. <laughs> I can't believe I fell for it a third time. <laughs> this, I, like at a certain point, it felt like the the filmmakers were doing that on purpose. Yeah, right. Like they were they were trying to tease you into the next scene. Like you don't know they could fuck in this scene, right? This, you know, <laughs> you know. Well, they're not gonna. It's Christian. He's got a Bible, and he's like, "Go, go read something or something after you bring me the one thing that I the one thing that I wanted." And she goes and she reads the Bible, and I'm like, "Bell." The Bible is his rose. Every time you read it, he will turn like a little bit more into a douche nozzle. And not a shitty person, a physical nozzle end of a douche. You gotta <laughs> so, t- stop touching the Bible. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, th- this is where they have their little Bible fight, right? Yeah. So he's like, oh, I hate that book. Get it away from me. Ah, it burns. And he throws it in the hot tub. And she freaks the Fuck out. Yeah, nobody <laughs> nobody throws Jesus in the hot tub. Right? She dives into the hot tub to get it and shit. Yes. <laughs> Her actual line here is, look, I don't know you or your reasons. <laughs> Yo, what? Amazing. What? Yep. Fantastic writing. But yeah, he storms off after throwing the Bible in the hot tub and she like pats it. She's like, poor yeah. Bible. There, there. I shall nurse you back to health. <laughs> Yeah. And for those paying attention, when he goes off, he's like, hey, Mrs. Haywood, what's for breakfast? He was hot tubbing before breakfast. Yep. (laughs) Yep. All right. And okay, this is amazing. So he tells her he yells at Bell, tells her that she needs to go pack his suitcase for this trip. He's taking doesn't know how long he's going to be gone, what kind of weather there's going to be, what kind of events (laughs) will be attending. She just he just says, go pack my bag. And then we get my favorite moment in this fucking movie. This movie's free on Amazon Prime. You should watch this goddamn scene. It it occurs at 21 minutes and 20 seconds, okay? She's calling her friend, the other oral hygienist, calling her friend to bitch about how much she hates the job. 
But she's holding her phone. She doesn't do the like shoulder thing with her phone. She's holding it. So the whole time she's talking and doing this scene, she is absentmindedly trying to like fold a button down dress shirt with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's for no, I did not see this until Noah put it in the notes. It's at 21 minutes and 20 seconds. She it's like she's doing those airplane signals with the shirt. You can see it. There's this one moment. It's so perfect. She throws the like collar at the bottom of the shirt so that it lands kind of folded and you see the actress be like, "Nailed it. Got it." <laughs> There's more drama in this actress's journey than pull the shirt one-handed than there is in the rest of this movie. <laughs> and the conversation that she's having with Anna, which, by the way, I hate that I share a name with so many of these Christian movie right. girls. But she's like, why won't you fuck my cousin? And she's like, yeah, I know. I'm so mean for not wanting... Like, 90s movies do this so often. Uh -huh. where like, I'm so mean for wanting to avoid this person I don't really know. I'm not interested in literally asking him to marry him last time we saw him. Like, Oh, God, he did, uh, didn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah, no, he was like, wouldn't it be stupid and stupid and, like, dumb if we just, like, married each other right now? It's dumb and stupid. I bet you wouldn't <laughs> do it. I bet you, I bet you would be scared. <laughs> exactly. Also... Okay. <laughs> want to point out that she does sum up the entire plot of this movie during this conversation just in case grandma fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, so now so he's off, he's gone on his trip or whatever. And and we get this like her just wandering around his house scene and she starts reading his his book report, like everything that they have that he's written is in these like primary colored folders that like it looked like something that you would have turned in at six. Phenomenal. Grade. Yeah. And <laughs> yep. the, they're amazing because they're he's a consultant. We're going to learn. But his the business consulting language that the people who wrote this movie came up with is my favorite. It's like <laughs> you need to raise profits and lower costs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a consultant business business. <laughs> it's the second worst businessing we will have in this movie. Yeah, and one of the many, many scenes where we just watch a montage of people reading. And I was like, okay, now can the menorah start singing? The death <laughs> lamp, the carton of eggs, her pen, anything? Like, can I watch anything in this movie besides people reading? It was insane. Yeah, right. Because he, like he catches her reading his book, and he's like, "Fine, then if you if you like that so much, then why don't you read all of the primary colored reports in my Trapper Keeper?" <laughs> so, <laughs> he's, and then oh, and then it's time for she's like, you know, we really have to flesh out the beast's origin story here. So she's gonna go have a conversation with Mrs. Haygood, and wouldn't you know it, it's in the fucking help kitchen in the back so that we can see that room as well. Yeah, because the help has their own kitchen um, and it's, the help is just Mrs. Haygood. Also, she is sewing in this scene and I just want to know, what does Mrs. Haygood sew for this guy? What does a full-grown adult need sewn for them in the 90s? I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that she's like fixing his stuffed animals, but it, my, <laughs> my issue with the sewing machine, diapers. though was that they did not turn it the goddamn fuck off during the conversation. <laughs> so the entire time we can hear this fucking goddamn sewing machine in the background. So, and also, by the way, I want to push back on this fucking movie trope that they're going to like, that they're going to reinforce in this scene because like, this is the part where we learn that he has the dark backstory and his wife died and blah, blah, blah. Some mm. people are just assholes because we've chosen to be that fucking way. Okay. <laughs> we didn't have to have somebody didn't have to die or anything like don't try to fucking fix us. We've decided on this. Yep. Yeah. It turns out he is actually a Christian. He's just giving God the silent treatment. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> God killed his wife. Well, yeah, his, his and I love to Mrs. Haygood said his wife died in an accident. And I was like, oh, right. And then he tried to make God's daughter into his butler but he wouldn't do it, and then <laughs> the bitch about it. i get it now okay uh all my notes by the way for this are just for the love of all that is good in the world please turn off that goddamn sewing machine i will become a christian at least for the duration of this conversation if you shut off this goddamn sewing machine <laughs> All right, but yeah, this is also where we learned that he was an alcoholic. 
Oh, yeah. But he got over that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's never really any reason for that. But Don't anyway. worry. That's going to pay off oh, in a not at all. It's going to pay off in a, yep, in a yep. totally a bottle of alcohol. That's what that bottle <laughs> Yeah, is. right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so much more appropriate if that thing had started singing than if it had had alcohol yep. in it. But yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the writers here have literally checked off the last thing on that act one to-do list in the how to write a screenplay worksheet. So I guess we can pause for a quick break, but we'll be back soon for even more Beauty and Belle and the Beast, the romantic tale retold Christianly. (laughs) Mormonism. (laughs) Oh, Mormonism. Hi, I'm Anna Bosnick. You know, when he isn't having weirdly sexual gift contests with Heath Enright, Eli is actually an excellent gift giver. They're not weirdly sexual. They're just sexual. But he's also impossible to shop for. What? Is that true? Impossible to legally shop for. That is fair. That is a fair piece of feedback. That's why there's Box of Awesome from Bespoke Post. What's that? Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly aged winter cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered. Ooh, ooh, tell them about the light bulbs. That's right. Dim was one of the boxes of awesome they sent us. It has a cool, smart lighting system and two white ambience light bulbs. I could turn them off on my phone. To get you started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Wow, 45 bucks for $70 worth of stuff? But it gets better. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code AWFUL, for 20% off your first box. Box of Awesome, because you can't buy Heath Doesn't Get Any Grapes for Christmas. You try. No, you can't. Hey, Belle, what's up? Oh, hey, Candace, not much. Got plans for the weekend? Well, I was gonna maybe because my out. cousin's in town, and I was thinking maybe the two of you could like you know go out. Oh, um, no, thanks. I'm good. You sure? Because he like really likes you. Yeah, no, I get his texts and his emails and that lock of his hair he sent me. No, yeah, that I get Craig, it. such a romantic, old fashioned. Mm, yeah. Anyways, not interested. Sorry. Well, you know, if I can't convince you, maybe Mr. Monkey can. Please, Bill, oh go out with Craig. He's watching us and he'll hurt me if you say no. Listen, I appreciate it, Mr. Monkey, but uh, I don't know. I just I just think he's not the guy for me. Please, Mr. Monkey doesn't want to die. All right, see ya, Candace. Please! <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Belle asking if she can work even more for free when she gets home, right? Because she's like reading the reports and she's like, I didn't get done with all of them. Can I take them home and do even more work for you for no money? Yeah, I don't understand why she wants to do more of this stuff. She's already putting her older brother through college and making dinner every night for her, I almost said kids, her younger siblings, and going to school and working at an orthodontistry place. Yeah, that's enough. (laughs) (laughs) One would think. Yeah. So she's back home and she's reading through the reports and Craig calls to see if she wants to go out on a surprise date with him again. (laughs) (laughs) I wrote in my notes, Craig is outside in a tree jerking off to her through the window. (laughs) Of course, as a joke, but it turns out, yeah, he's actually asking her this from out front of her house. Yep. Yeah, so far, and also so far he's asked her out for ice cream, which meant Ben and Jerry's fr- on the porch. Right, from yeah. The, like pocket Ben and Jerry's on the porch. <laughs> what does he think going to see a movie or going out to eat means? Like, no, I don't. I don't want to eat cold takeout in your truck or watch YouTube videos on your phone. That's yeah, not what I'm going right, to do right, right now. Yeah, exactly. He's got, a, he's got a fucking blockbuster rental sitting on the porch. He's like, we can see it from here. You know, you hold up, if you hold up the tape, you can see the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, and look, and and because because her sister comes by and she, uh, her little sister comes to her, she's like, "Hey, did you shoot down that boy that was calling?" She's like, she didn't shoot him down. She like 
asked him to plan something with more than like six minutes notice. Right. <laughs> Less because he's outside right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a boy. Why aren't you fucking? I don't understand. <laughs> This little sister's quiz round gets weird. She's like, oh, was that Craig? How does the clitoris work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Kelly. Kelly is my favorite character. And also, by the way, Kelly is the best actor in the goddamn movie, right? She's the only person yes. who seems like she belongs in a fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Sure. But she's talking to the sister, and she's hamming it up, and she's goddamn hilarious. And she's, she's going like, She's asking her about kissing. She's like, wait, does the boy go left and the girl go right or the boy go right and the girl go left? And and of course, her sister's like, neither, you fucking idiot. You'd be facing the same goddamn direction if you did that, you fucking punch. Think it through. <laughs> Think through the logistics Think. of this. Think. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so. Yeah, girl needs better sex education. <laughs> well, yeah, right, right. No, this is a Utah movie, isn't it? Right. So, yeah, there's no fucking idea. She probably thinks that's how babies are made at this point. <laughs> All right, so now, okay, we we rejoin Eric this time in his giant podcast listening room. <laughs> Again, I love what Christians think is nice. He's watching TV on his luxurious set of lazy boy chairs. <laughs> Sitting next to each other, yes. I love, so he says, you know, you've read my reports. What can you tell me about my job? And she's like, the Oxford English Dictionary defines your job as, you know, like she, like she has, they have no, the writers themselves could not tell you what a consultant does beyond consults. Yeah, she says, I really liked your analysis. How would she know if he, she likes his analysis? She's just reading the analysis without right, yeah, seeing the Right, yeah, she doesn't know what he's company. analyzing. <laughs> <laughs> really, you thought that? That advice that Wendy should start selling shirts was good, huh? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she's like, well, you could be nicer. Like, you tend to just, like, pick them apart and tell them all the wrong things they're doing. Well, well, yeah, that's that's what he's doing. He's like a dominatrix for companies. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, like, this character we've already established is going to school for, like, an MBA. Right. You you would think that they could have her have say something more than like, you should be nicer. <laughs> yeah. She's going to school for an MBA. Yeah. But he's like, no, you don't get it. I'm like, I'm the Simon Cowell of business consultants. It's kind of my thing. I'm supposed to be all mean and angry. It's like, so he starts, I guess, stomping around like a fucking toddler because she was, you know, less than he was mean. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> slamming doors like me when Anna won't let me dress as Santa and wander the streets of our neighborhood covered in fake blood. It's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I want to talk about this scene Uncanny. is that she then walks in while he's working out and like this is supposed to be like a cheesecake shot of like him sweating but he has the machine set to the lowest <laughs> possible just weight. picking up one of those little tiny <laughs> weights. It's so funny. <laughs> And of course, this scene is really here because we haven't even seen the goddamn workout room The home room yet. gym, yeah. Yeah, he's got a whole gym <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah, this is one of many scenes where he'll be like, okay, I'm going to wait until she comes right through the door and then I'm going to do like a really cool bench press or something. Yeah, right. No, I'll do a cool <laughs> spin kick just to see what I'm doing. Yeah. His, his first line might as well be, one million, one million and one. <laughs> oh, hey, didn't see you there. All right, so we check in with her at her dentist job. Yep. And like her friend is basically saying at this point, she's like, hey, man, this plot makes no fucking sense. Look, if your dad lost his job, you know, if you were getting paid for all this work you're doing for this guy, that would make up for it. Like if your dad worked at McDonald's, it, like this, this whole fucking movie makes no sense. I'm a character in it. <laughs> also, <laughs> just have to point out, these orthodontists appear to have an open office plan, and I am not into no, it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> also, she's touching someone's teeth. So this is one of the reasons why I was like, she must have gone through medical school before this. Why is she quitting medical school 
to go get an M- like a fucking business degree? Are you kidding me? This is like a good paying job. Why would yeah. you go back to school for fucking to become a dentist since she already has this? Nope, she doesn't. Anyway, no, yeah, sorry. They have gonna- no, right. no, and and look, it's because what they could afford. Like they they had a buddy who had a a friend who had access to this dental hygienist spot for them to do these these shots in, right? Have her be a fucking secretary. Don't touch people's teeth if you don't have <laughs> medical school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, Eric's, you know, still businessing hard late that night. Uh, it was, by the way, <laughs> he's got like he has to do business space work. So he's scribbling on a paper, but the paper's not even he's going sideways. It's not even aligned <laughs> the way a paper would be if you were writing on it. <laughs> OK, this is so important because. We can see it's just scribbles. Like yes. they know we can see <laughs> it's not writing, right? There's it's no not even spaces. within the lines. See, no. That's what Eli. That's what the Vaseline on the screen is for. It's to. It's because they don't know how to actually write words. He's a literate, <laughs> oh. so they're just trying to like blur it out as much as possible. <laughs> But Mrs. Haygood comes in, and I don't know. She offers him something, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Honestly, his comebacks in this are like. A bad Chandler impression without the laugh track. So he's like, <laughs> "Could you be me? me, me? Oh, could you be more? Me, me, me? It's really awful. It's just, yeah." <laughs> so, and I guess the next day, like, um, he's sick, right? So Bell catches him in bed, and I guess they realize, well, we have to start changing his personality a little bit at some point because by the end of it, it has to be different. So that's what this scene does. He wakes up. She's uh, putting his stuff away. She's like, oh, I didn't realize you were in bed. I'm so very embarrassed. And he's like, ah, what if I was in the shower with my penis hanging out? Huh? Oh, that would <laughs> yeah. be even worse. A fun a shower joke. Where are you going? Funny. Okay. And then he goes, he goes, Belle, I'm sorry I was an asshole to you yesterday. I've also been an asshole literally every other second since the minute we met. <laughs> I'm not sorry about those moments. But the thing yesterday... It's been working on me. I, I, yeah. I apologize for that. He apologizes and this movie acts like she's going to bring him a fucking medal. <laughs> it's like, oh, he did this wonderful thing for you. He just uh, he just said sorry for treating you like shit. Why aren't you automatically in love with him? Right, right. right. <laughs> Why are you not crawling into that bed? What the fuck's wrong with him? <laughs> oh, oh then there's, there's this great fucking moment, too, where like, Later on, like he, she's she's going like uh, he's got this bottle of booze, right? That he keeps in his office. Well, that is it. <laughs> is it? It's 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 a blue bottle with no label on it. Yes. it could, it's honestly closer to fancy olive oil than it would be to booze. <laughs> My note was it looked like something a cartoon character would like put a note in or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And she like she's like, so why do you keep the thing around? And he's like, have you even drank, bro? <laughs> it's like it's fucking hard. It's hard out there for an alcoholic. It's yeah. Crazy. When he said that, I wanted her to be like, no, but I'm a Christian. I judge people for stuff that has nothing to do with me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, he's like, he's like, well, look, I need to have that there so that I have something to stare longingly at in act three when our relationship <laughs> is on the skids. Noah wrote this note and contemporarily in the movie and <laughs> that ass on. Yeah. Contemporarily, contemporaneously. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, OK. And then we have the the moment where like. He gets a phone call that she takes and he forgot to do something while he was sick and she takes the blame for it now. Yeah. yeah for no reason. Oh, because he apologized to her earlier. That's it, the reason. It makes no sense and it's supposed to show them becoming closer. But the only thing about this scene that I loved is that we see the overnight mail and the way that the people who wrote this movie think overnight whale works is that you just write overnight on it in big red letters. There's no stamps, no scan code. It's just overnight in big red letters and the fucking tooth fairy takes it on her way to Bayonne, New Jersey. Get it right, motherfuckers. Yeah. So, so okay, so now we have another, like, you know, she walks in to see Mrs. Haygood and she's like, hey, where's Eric? And she's like, oh, well, we haven't used, which rooms have we not used yet? He'll meet you in the great room. 
<laughs> this is so good. <laughs> this is so obviously an advertisement for the house. It's like, you wait in the great room. It's next to the just okay room. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says it's next to the entrance. And she's like, oh, you know, the one where I couldn't find early, like the one that I couldn't find earlier with the closets in it. And she's like, no, the other one. She I'm confused as to as to what she saw that wasn't the great room. If it's I don't know, (laughs) it's fucking stupid. You know, that big great room that you walk into as you come into the house. (laughs) It's that one. The one right next to the entrance you've been walking past every single fucking day. Sure. So, okay, so now, so they have this conversation. He says, he's he's like realized that she was right. He's been too much of a dick in his corporate consulting, and he wants her to look through his notes and make them less angry and harsh. Now, <laughs> I would have said that he wanted her to take the anal out of analysis. That's a great joke, but they're not allowed to use it because they're going for a no. Christian audience here. So, sure, yeah. sure. I will He had her. Just to just to recap, he had her meet him in a different room of the house just to tell her <laughs> that she's going to be doing more work work for him. Yes. Like the writers of this movie, you know what people liked about Fifty Shades of Grey? All those times she was exploited for free labor. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> God, it is. It's Fifty Shades of Grey without the fucking. It really is. Exactly. It's so, oh. Yep. All right. So now she's... <laughs> immediately after that we have the scene where she's like been working on his reports and he wants to see what she's written oh this actress miming reading really hard is fantastic (laughs) comedy it's it's not as good as the one-handed shirt fold but it's pretty fucking great (laughs) (laughs) oh and she's doing this outside on the balcony She's writing in the cold while standing. And wind. As he gave her a desk at the beginning of this thing. Yes. Like there is a desk that she could be working on inside. But she's standing outside in the wind and the cold, a revising yuck. reports in primary colored trappers. Yes. I, I have a feeling she couldn't find her way back to her desk after leaving the great room. <laughs> <laughs> so she just walked outside. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So he's like, I want to read your stuff. And she's like, uh, well, I'm not done with it. He's like, I don't care. I want to read it anyway. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I just wrote whatever I was thinking after he literally snatches it from her hands. Long pause. Why do you draw little pictures of me setting myself on fire? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I yeah. Well, all her notes are just like frowny face over here, frowny face over there. You know, be nicer. You should be nicer. Why not be nicer? Right. Yep. <laughs> Look for the love in his eyes. <laughs> Try to come with a song in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> And then he just chucks his own goddamn report over the balcony (laughs) in his temper tantrum. I love how the movie, the movie makers think time works in this next set of scenes. (laughs) Yep. He chucks, chucks the thing over the, over the balcony and then goes and plays pool with himself. Yes. Yep. 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 I now wanted every scene in the movie to begin with him playing more and more complicated games all on his own. (laughs) The finale takes place. He's skating around his private hockey rink, scoring goals on himself. (laughs) (laughs) So so it cuts to him playing pool with himself. And then to her after the game, after he's played a full game, she finally has figured out her way downstairs to pick up the papers. Right. Well, and then, yeah, and then he goes, <laughs> she hasn't picked it. She's picked up two of them by the time he comes downstairs and apologizes and helps her put these papers back together. It took her a whole game of pool to walk downstairs. <laughs> well, she had to find her way through the great room. and <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and then, OK, so then they're going to wander down a garden path together and fall in love. Oh. They're going to leave half the papers on the ground. <laughs> they totally are, up. yes. There's going to be like four or five papers still sitting there. And they'll go, walk <laughs> down this garden path with me. She'll be like, fucking fine, whatever. <laughs> Somebody will get this shit. And then this is so awesome. So they're walking down this garden path. And this is clearly all the lines were written before the writer saw the place they were going to be walking. The lines <laughs> are very clearly written as though they're walking through a garden. 
but they're not. They're walking through a forest. Right. So he's going dead like trees in winter. Yeah. Right. She's going. It's so beautiful. And he's like, yeah, my wife planted all of this. I'm like the trees. She planted a fucking forest. Was this 30 <laughs> years ago and you came back? What the hell are you talking about? She dude? also planted all that moss on the rock. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you even talking about? <laughs> And also, but they they walk, and of course we're here because there's a little garden path in the mansion, and we also have to show that part for the uh, realty uh, purposes. <laughs> but it's really short, so they only walk like seven or eight steps. And then he's like, "All right, I got to get back to work. I wanted to take you on this eight step stroll, but now you're on your own." <laughs> yeah, and he's like kind of snarky at the end of it too. And I'm like, God, I really wish this was the Disney movie. Where is the point where she braids his hair and teaches him how to eat with a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> this is just so much business. All right. So now he comes across. This is it gets really weird at this point. So he comes across her doing her homework at his place. Mm -hmm. And then we end up with this helping her with her homework montage. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about the music of this montage? First of all, <laughs> the music of the montage and them speaking to each other are at the exact same volume. Yes, mm -hmm. yes they are competing for your attention. Yes, also, they are. If the singer of the music in this montage isn't related to someone in this movie or in this movie, I'll eat my own ball sack. It's my promise to you. <laughs> oh, my God. This is not just the worst song that exists, okay? This is no. the worst song that could exist theoretically in all <laughs> possible worlds. <laughs> it's also in this montage where we learn that her undergrad degree is a fucking English degree, but which does not give you the authority to touch people's fucking teeth. Yes. She has had no medical training. I couldn't get, I'm sorry. The, my notes just turned into all caps of like, just, uh, I, and she's going for a business. To, this makes no fucking so, sense. So she went and she got a, 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 a degree, a, a certificate or whatever it is that you need to be an uh, uh, oral hygienist. And then she went and got an English degree, and now she's going back for an MBA. And then, and after that, she's going to be an engineer. <laughs> she's going to be a spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> what? But this montage, ooh. <laughs> well, and also, by the way, the song is not mixed correctly. It's got a very dirty, garagey sound to it that the rest of the movie doesn't have. Everything is bad about this. Oh, yeah. There's at one point where they're like showing that they're starting to enjoy like working together and he's throwing a stress ball around and she catches it and then tosses it back to him. And I just wanted him to like, <laughs> I wanted him to show that his anger hadn't fully gone away and he just throws the stress ball at her and walks away. <laughs> it hits her in the face with it or something. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. And so, and, and then, and now they're even having fun together instead of playing billiards all by himself, he's playing with her. Oh, mm. And that's where the montage kicks out, right? So they're 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 not uh, they're, they're two of them are upstairs playing billiards together when Craig the stalker shows up at her job to bother her. Yep, Craig is here wearing a skin suit made out of your dad. When do you want to talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> no, she actually meets him in the great room, which is funny. Yeah, she does. <laughs> And they have him, Craig, turned away from the camera near a bush. And I swear to God, I thought he was peeing in a bush. <laughs> and he came downstairs and I was like, oh, they've ramped up the crazy on him real fast. <laughs> See, but nope. Ironically, my first note was, hey, I brought you a jar of my pee. <laughs> <laughs> We're all on the same lines. Yeah, right. And so, <sighs> yeah. And like this movie is so very clearly trying its hardest not to piss off all the Craigs that are watching it. It re oh it's very it's a very Craig centric worldview. This film, <laughs> yeah, because well, look, because the 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 target audience of this movie is sitting here watching this fucking thing with her husband, who is at this point saying, "Well, if you had gone to work for some rich fucker when I had decided that I was going to date you before you had agreed, I'd have mm -hmm. gone over there and gave him a piece of my mind." Right. Well, he 
also doesn't know any of the like reasons why she started working for him. So she, he just thinks that this is her second job and he's showing up and he's guilt tripping her about not seeing anybody in town and not having time for anything anymore. Meanwhile, she's putting a fucking person through college and being dad to her two other siblings. And like, it's, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. He gets mad at her for working. Right. And by the way, fucking Craig having a crush on her does not create an obligation on her part. For fuck's sake, this yep. movie barely <laughs> ever acknowledges that. And she's like, I appreciate. Oh, oh he calls her. What is it? They call her because they can't like swear in this. And Mr. Riches. That's the insult Mr. they lay on Don. Riches. And she's yeah. like, I appreciate that you think you own me because we're, after all, the only two single people in town. And that's what everybody keeps harping about. But you will respect the man who thinks I am cheaper than a face. <laughs> <laughs> well, she like, yeah, no. When she calls him Mr. Riches, it, like he might as well have used the N word. Right. She is. Exactly. He might as well have just thrown a Bible in a hot tub. She freaks <laughs> fuck out on that one. Yeah. Later in my notes, I write, Riches is his word. You could say Rich Chad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So this is so good. And then they realize that they haven't shot this. I swear to fucking God, they haven't shot any scenes yet in the three car garage of this mansion. <laughs> so she literally catches He's. They have no reason for him to be in the garage. So she catches him like looking for something in his car. <laughs> yep. Yep, it's totally not him setting up. Oh, I bet she's gonna like look at my sweet car collection. Yeah, if right. They, like, yeah, another like perfectly set up moment for her to walk in on. <laughs> was, oh, don't bother, don't mind me. I was just, uh, this is my Lamborghini. But this is where he invites her to the big business meeting date dinner <laughs> thing. Yeah, <gasps> me a real dinner outside the house. <laughs> We're not going to just eat Ben and Jerry's on your porch, are you? Because I've been yeah. tricked before. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once, you know. And so, yeah, so, but yeah, they, we got a quick scene of her and her friend having the date, not a date conversation. Mm -hmm. And then he picks her up. Oh. And she is dressed for the <laughs> goddamn prom, right? Not even, not even the prom. She is dressed for a Jane Austen novel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> think Regency era England, but less revealing. <laughs> like she's got a goddamn shawl on. She does. <laughs> really wanted this business dinner to be at Chili's and she's just wearing that ball gown. <laughs> Spoiler alert for the next scene. It will be the nicest Olive Garden in the town they shot this movie in. So, the one by the mall. The good one. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, All right. So now they, when they go to this fancy restaurant and we meet plastic surgery's daughter. She sure is happy to see Craig there with a lady. Oh, they might as well put the women at the kids table together. Oh, God. <laughs> I had this woman as like. I imagine her showing up to her plastic surgeon and saying, can I have the Dolly Parton? Please? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, he, and he says, no. Well, uh, no, but I'm going to get you as close as we can <laughs> yeah. for $700 in that coupon. Yeah. But she approves that she he's bringing someone along. Yeah. That's good. And they start. So now we have to have him having this conversation with all these other various business people, the business, business, business conversation. And it's mm -hmm. just they're all sitting around going like, yeah, we could fire those people. Yep, we sure could fire those people. Yeah, we, they would not have jobs yeah. anymore. Ha ha ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she's like, um, you shouldn't fire people for funsies like. <laughs> and then they're all like, wait a minute. What, is, what the hell is this woman talking about? <laughs> <laughs> rebel, rebel, business, business, rebel, rebel. <laughs> Also, I totally didn't care about the business talk, but what I did care about was the prop work here. Um, they very clearly serve her a slice of cheesecake with a bite taken out of it from a previous cake. And she's like, Mademoiselle, this is our famous uh, cheesecake with a bite taken out of it. I hope you will enjoy. <laughs> the chef wanted to make sure it was fresh, so. It is from only the finest cheesecake factory. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Then we get this amazing goddamn scene, right? Because uh -huh. as Anna's already alluded to, going out just means being outdoors in this film. So he takes her up to this mountain thing. Now, in the <laughs> this whole goddamn scene is shot in the fucking dark. 
We, we, totally we, we can, in the dark. We can mm-hmm. see some vague black silhouettes against dark blue snow. If those people were not talking, you would not be able to peg those moving shapes as human goddamn beings. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they drive up this mountain, and the line is, I didn't know this was up here. You didn't know this mountain was up here. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> What did you think was up here? I just, I thought it was just a mountain. Not again, a, a mountain. <laughs> very, very clearly written for before they knew where they were shooting this movie. Yes, it's supposed to be yes. like, she's like, I thought you went up 800 feet. You'd be out of the simulation altogether. <laughs> It's very clearly meant to be like a lovely valley or anything, but it again, we cannot emphasize enough, it is just a barren field, which they tried to hide by shooting at night. Yeah. Yep, and he's like, come over here in your Egypt and sit on this pile of snow with me in your yes. Regis Sierra gown with no coat and talk yes. to me about how real God is. <laughs> All right, so here's the amazing thing. I figured this out, and and when, when I say I figured this out late, I mean I figured this out just this very moment. They're sitting in front of a frozen lake. There was a lake? Right? That's oh. what she's saying. She did, yeah, we can't tell because it's goddamn dark, but later he throws it. When they come back to the scene, he throws the bottle into the lake. That's what she's talking about, right? That's oh, the, okay. I, I didn't know this was up here. She's talking about the lake. But but we had no goddamn idea because we can't see that there's a lake there because we might as well just be looking at a black goddamn screen. <laughs> well, also, I think there must be snow covering or something because I legit yeah. thought that was a puddle. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. There is. It's completely covered in ice and snow, too. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. that and the dark. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, my God. So, okay, so the two of them <sighs> start talking about they have to have the conversation about his dead wife. Honestly, when it was just them doing romance scenes, I I just skipped through it. It was the same shit over and over again. I was like, oh, God. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the, the only thing you need to know about this scene, then, is that when when his wife died in an auto accident, he was driving and, quote, the left front tire hit the road wrong and we <laughs> crashed. <laughs> you, know sometimes, <laughs> you know how sometimes it hits it wheel first and sometimes it hits it... <laughs> Car first. I have no idea what the fuck that's supposed to mean. And then, and by the way, and her, and she's like, and ever since he's like, and ever since that, I've hated God. And she's just like, man, that was fucking years ago. You need to get over that shit. You just yeah. <laughs> wow, Damn. really? You're, You're still dwelling still on mad that. At him? All right. And by the way, at the end of this scene, Bell says sometimes bad things happen to good people, which is true, but. Not a point or even on her side of the conversation. No, no. It's the end of the conversation about whether or not God is evil. But this movie's pretty sure it's her trump card. Yeah. Well, he doesn't not believe in God. He just is mad at him. Right. Like that we've established that he's not an atheist. He just is mad at God for killing his wife. Right. No, he wanted God to see him throw that Bible in that hot tub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, I bet they used a stunt Bible for it, right? I bet they, I bet they, <laughs> anyway. Used yeah. a copy of Harry Potter so that they wouldn't all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So he drives her home and they, and they finished the conversation up with a very like, Hey, you know, sometimes bad stuff is actually good stuff. What if maybe God just bumped off your wife so you could fuck me later? Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. Thinking out loud. Just thinking out loud. I just wrote in my notes. I am very used to the I just proved God isn't real at dinner silence when you're <laughs> dropping someone off. <laughs> Ended a lot of dates in that very silent, polite, quiet. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And we get a Bible reading montage. Another reading montage. Fun. Yeah, well, and then we get we get a Bible reading montage for her and a Bible almost reading montage for him. <laughs> right? Like this this terrible song starts playing and he's like he's looking at the wet Bible and he's like, ah, oh, there's this is just the end act two. I can't not yet. No, no. Yeah, it's yeah, not Bible ready yet. You know how I know this is Christian music in the background, though, because the only accompaniment in this song is piano, and they didn't bother to get a real piano for the recording. Oh. It's just, it's like the Pro Tools Grand Piano, Grand Steinway piano mod on yeah, the keyboard. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And and by the way, it's Melody Four on that as well. If in case you're curious. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie 
needs a second to come up with a conflict. So we're going to give it a minute. But uh, but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Can they come up with a variable that fits into the can they act in time formula in time? How much longer can we keep this episode going without the benefit of a plot? How the fuck is this like Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> Find out the answers to most of these questions and more when we return for the exciteless conclusion of The Beast and the Bell, a Latter-day Christian tale of romance. I, I mean, mostly it's because I like to have the actual thing to plug into the mic. No, I get that. But it's just so much stuff to have in the studio. Yeah. Anna, 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 Anna. He said I'm going bald. Ah, oh, don't be silly. You're not going bald. You just got a bad haircut. That's right. That bad haircut from six years ago. That's right. Six years ago, you just got a really bad haircut. See, Heath, Heath, I told you it was just my haircut. What was that all about? Oh, Eli's just a little sensitive about losing his hair. Oh, why doesn't he just try ForHims.com? What's ForHims.com? It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Really? No internet pills? Did you learn nothing from Eli's investment in the magic beans? No, no. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by science. Oh, that does sound good. But doesn't he need to go to the doctor or something for that? Well, 4 hims connects you to real doctors online, which could save you hours. Completely confidential and discreet. But that's going to be super expensive, right? Not at all. Dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to 4 slash gam. That's 4 slash gam. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Only valid if prescribed. Three months minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash gam. Anna, sorry, one more thing. He says there's no such thing as handsome juice. Well, then what have I been giving you? That's what I said. Handsome juice? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 I've uh, I've mostly been using Isotope. Oh, I, I hear uh, good stuff about their plugins. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's, <gasps> it's you, Fuck you, Noah. Fuck you right in the face. Really good. Yeah, it's really good. Dude, uh, so, sorry, sorry. Eli, what, what the hell? Oh, sorry about that, Noah. My wife died. And you know how we atheists get when our wives die. Wait, what? I didn't die, Eli. Oh, you did, though. Uh, when you sneeze, your heart stops. Okay, Eli. One, that's not true. <laughs> and two, you fat, hairy bitch. No illusions. S seriously, <sighs> dude. I'm I'm sorry. It's dusty. So, yeah, sorry, no. I've watched 235 Christian movies. I know how these things go. This is not how these things go. Okay, people don't die when they sneeze. They they don't. No. <laughs> oh well. I'm really sorry about that, Noah. You see, I was thinking, fuck you. People, people don't die when they fart either, Eli. No, that was me. Yeah, he's got you there. I'm going to go open the window. Oh, uh, come on. See, now my wife left me. Go to the doctor. No. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, we were... Starting to see Eric's softer side. But in case you didn't catch that, don't worry. The movie's about to like completely divert for 10 goddamn minutes to clumsily reinforce that. Uh, oh, this part of the God. movie is useless and does not matter. <laughs> this is Well, actually, I can see what they were going for. They're like, like he's working for her now, which is crazy. Right. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, he walks out and like she, he's like, oh, you must be cold. Let me bring you a blanket and tuck you in because this is a Christian movie. Because <laughs> she's studying outside again in the yeah. cold when she could be <laughs> studying at her desk. Why? <laughs> well, because we hadn't seen that lovely patio yet. So. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I wrote my notes at this point where he's like tucking a blanket in a runner. Like, what is their relationship now? Is it a daddy daughter dom thing going? Like what? I, 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 boss, who's the boss? I don't. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but she realizes she's like, oh fuck, I gotta go. I have an exam in ten minutes. Luckily, my school is nine minutes away. <laughs> I guess. And just then, she gets a call from her little sister 
Somebody has to pick her little sister up from school because she got in trouble and she's getting suspended. Oh, no. Whoever could do it. Uh, yeah, because she doesn't want her to call her dad because he'll get mad. So she's like making her sister parent her instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I assume she's in trouble for headbutting someone while trying to kiss them. No. Based on <laughs> earlier in the movie. <laughs> well, and then Eric is like, oh, hey, I, it's no big deal. I've, I've softened up significantly since act one. And I'm sure a school will just entrust a. 12 year old girl with whoever shows up and claims her right <laughs> uh yeah it, so this is what the movie was going for so in the beginning she had to pick up his laundry and now their roles of swish he's picking up her sister laundry sister it's like the same <laughs> same value there so <laughs> oh yeah so he goes to claim this 12 year old don't worry he's got the little he's got the coat check tag for her or whatever <laughs> but that like the principal would like to have a talk with him now this will be the first of six or seven scenes in act three where like the person interrupting you as you try to say no no you there's been a misunderstanding like their interruption is vital to the scene continuing yep Right, because the principal's like, look, I understand that you're you and your daughter's relationship. He's like, oh, 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 I'm not the. And the principal's like, please don't interrupt me while I'm talking, and <laughs> and, and keeps going. Right, you're fucking up the whole plot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You play, but yeah. Now there is, of course, as Eli said, no reason for this part of the movie to exist whatsoever. No, no. Right, so it doesn't fuck up the plot, but it certainly fucks up the scene. Yeah. Yeah, so they have this whole little, oh, tee hee. And, and eventually, Eric, by the way, just starts playing along with the, yeah, yeah. she's my daughter, whatever. <laughs> thing. The principal's like, you know what the worst problem with kids these days is? Is parents have to work all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you go to work and not spend time with your child? Bunch of fucking assholes. Yeah. So he picks the sister up, and then they have a little heart to heart moment. And again, I fucking love Kelly. I know this has nothing to do with anything else in the movie, but I fucking love Kelly. So I, I'm all for this scene. She <laughs> turns to him. She goes, does your mansion really have secret passages? And <laughs> first of all, Kelly, think, think it fucking true. It's like the headbutt thing. If he said yes, they wouldn't be secret anymore. Fucking idiot. <laughs> she also explains that her mom never yelled at her. I wanted her to be like, she didn't care what I did. She used to say, be gay, do crimes. <laughs> <laughs> But fucking Belle is going to be like, oh, you shouldn't have cheated on your chest, stupid Belle. Yep. And that's that scene, by the way. Yeah. He learns that Belle is mom now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Nothing was established with that. And and no, by the way, we'll never pull the trigger on the now Eric knows her little sister thing. Nothing. Okay. So now it's time for, I would say, the point of the film. <laughs> <laughs> This is the part where Bell catches Eric showing off his contractually obligated Muay Thai skills. He's doing his sweet fucking kicks. Oh, my God. And he does that like she walks in and he like does a spin kick. And he's like, whoa, you're lucky I almost killed you with my sweet karate <laughs> skills. Remind me to explain risk control to you later. But yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I have the reflexes of a cat. Like he wasn't waiting for her to walk in the door. Perfectly timed to do that spin kick. Oh, he's you know, there's a mirror on the other side of that fucking wall <laughs> that we that can't outfit see. Outfit and everything. He changed clothes just to do karate <laughs> for this girl. Well, and you know that he knew she was coming. Otherwise, that whole kata would have started with. And then I'd be like, <laughs> so, yeah, so he he's doing his sweet karate. And by the way, like the whole scene is she walks in and he does some hua hua. And, and then she goes, oh, thank you for that last scene. He's like, you're very welcome. And then she leaves. That's it. Yep. The point of this scene, as Noah said, the point of this movie is to show off his sweet karate skills. <laughs> yes. And then, oh, well, we also get some McDonald's. She's like, oh, and by the way, we should eat some McDonald's later. Oh, okay. This is the most realistically disgusting fast food burger that I have ever seen in a movie. And it made <laughs> me want a fast food burger so bad. Awful. Is it, it bad looks that so it also gross. made me want one? Oh, man. It was, it looked really, really gross and perfect and wonderful. And I wanted it in my body. Anyway, 
So they, they, they do, you know what pairs well with Mickey D's is talking about dead moms. Yes. So they have this whole thing about like over this, these burgers. And I rewound the tape three times just to make sure I was seeing this correctly. Her bun does not have a burger in it. It's true. She I is checked. eating a sesame bun with lettuce and tomato and nothing else. And I am more angry about this fact than anything else in this movie. She fucking <laughs> Eli'd that shit, didn't she? Yes, she <laughs> Eli'd that shit. She yep. was a vegan before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, is it cool now? When the hell did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they have this conversation where he's going like, hey, you know, maybe... God hates you too. We could get into some kinky shit then, right? Like we both, we both give up on him. No, we're going, we're going the other way. Okay, all right. Also, she did. She's like, I didn't think you'd be into fast food because she's only ever seen him scream at his housekeeper for making him vegetables. What? <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> what right. Makes you think. <laughs> well, you've clearly never seen him get a fucking bagel from uh, Dunkin' well, Donuts. Well, chicken yeah. nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, all right. So, yeah. And then um, he has to fly to New York City for some reason for businessing. And this only exists so they can have this a couple of scenes where they realize that they're missing each other. Mm hmm. Oh, he calls to check in on her from Times Square because that's a recognizable place in the taxi cab. And he's like, yeah, we're going to this fancy place later. It's called the Olive Garden. No big deal. It's in New York <laughs> City. You maybe heard of it. And then like, no, you hang up. They have, they have like, yeah, no, you right, right. Moment. Yes. You, no, you. <laughs> well, and what I love is, so what they give, this is, this is their New York City, by the way. They give us some B roll of Times Square at night, right? With none of the mm -hmm. characters from this movie in it. And then we see him in a car, which we're supposed to assume is a cab. But like, New York City is like the one place in the goddamn country where I can look outside the window, see the sort of blurry lights out of focus in the background and go, nope. Not nope. New York City. Not also, New York. Th that is not what cab seats look like. No, so that's far too clean to be cab seats. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's your buddy's Passat right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So she's she's friending at the dentist office, and her friend, of course, only can exist in a scene if she's explaining how much Craig still wants to have sex with her. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like my cousin still wants to fuck you. Remember my cousin from Act One. And she says she feels, I feel bad. Last time I was so rude for him because he was mad at me for working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he showed up at my job and was mad at me for working at that job. Yes. Right. So she, she agrees. She finally caves in and agrees to go on a lunch date with <sighs> Craig. Right. And he takes her out of the house to an actual restaurant. Right. And, and just when you're thinking, man, maybe he's figured out what a date is. He goes, I rented movies. You want to come to my house and watch them? <laughs> yes. Oh, dude. They're mostly of you through your bathroom window, but there is a <laughs> I rented the camera that made them. You know. <laughs> well, like, and for, okay, first of all, no, dude, you take her to a goddamn movie. And secondly, or you take her to the video store and let her have some say in what movies get rented. And third, some movies you're going you want her to go over there and watch four hours plus a movie. Fuck you. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus. Like, Look, if I seem rude and weirdly possesses of you, it's because I like you so much. <laughs> yeah. And he touches her. This is the first time that he's like, do he starts doing the weird, like, I'm going to touch your hand when I tell you these things. Yeah, and I wanted so bad for her to go full Muay Thai clench on him. You know what I saw this morning? <laughs> she is cool spin. That kick. would have tied it in. Brought it all together. The risk control thing. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we almost we cannot help but accidentally write a better movie than this. Exactly. Right? They need yeah. us to go through there and put frowny faces in their notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now uh, stalker dude is checking in with the dentist office friend. And this is where like Anna, her friend, explains that she's only working for Eric because her dad broke the vase thing. Right. Like, he, yeah, he, she fills him in on that part of the plot. Creepy poor man. Steve-O, it turns out, is the strangest version you've ever seen of Gaston. And he's like, oh, obviously, I have to save her from this. But we'll find out how he does that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
So, okay, so uh, Eric gets back from his trip to New York, and Mrs. Haygood is like, hey, you know, we should probably really revisit this whole premise, right? Because the plot no longer makes sense. Does she really think that now that you're tucking her in with the blanket, you're still going to get her dad fired? And also, are you going to call his job and say three weeks ago he broke my <laughs> vase and now I want him fired? That doesn't, <laughs> none of this makes any sense anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, oh, I know she's worked off the vase, but she's so cute. Can we keep her, please? And Mrs. is like, yeah, but you have to take her on the walks by yourself. Yeah, you have to clean up after her <laughs> yeah. every day. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. So then, okay, we have to, like, finally have the moment where Belle tells Craig, no, look, I am not romantically interested in you. Yeah. Yeah. He opens up this conversation by being like, hey, I was just wondering if you wanted to go out on any of the times or any of the days. <laughs> <laughs> Which, this should have been a phone call. He shows up at her yes. house to have this conversation instead of calling her on the phone and being like, hey, you want to go out sometime? <sighs> also, when they're having this conversation, they step into shot. Like, someone very clearly <laughs> off camera is like, you're not in the shot. So you, we watch them, like, yes. swoosh backwards into the <laughs> yes. shot as they're speaking to each other. And she is amazingly clear about how she doesn't like, she's like, I'm just not interested in you that way. I'd love to be friends still, but I'm, I just don't see you that way. To which he says, when you change your mind, I'll be here. And then she goes to respond like, that's not, that's a weird thing for you to say. And he's like, no, no, no. And he touches her fucking face to shut her up. Yep. There is so much unwanted face touching in this movie. Oh, yeah, right. He shushes her. And then she's like, okay, I'm fucking leaving. And at least, and then I wrote in my notes, okay, good. This movie knows he's the bad guy. Oh, good. Yep. Right? Like it, it has to at this point. And then, and it, it proves that to me. Then he goes to his car and he calls her dad's boss, pretending to be Eric Landry, the beast guy, rich dude, and gets her dad fired after all. <laughs> and I really, really wanted to overhear that conversation. Just hello. This is Eric Landry, the villain. I have an employee I'd like you to fire from a month ago. Yeah, What right? did he do? Mm, I don't know if I've had that information as a character, but just, oh, you'll fire him. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> I can only conclude from the stakes of this movie that, like, Belle's dad, like, brings child porn into work or constantly proselytizes to his co-workers, and they've just been begging for an excuse to fire him, and that's right. the yeah, subplot exactly. we miss. <laughs> All right, so Belle is about to go see Eric for some datey type, not quite a date thing or whatever. And then her dad comes in full mope and he's like, yeah, they fucking fired me for breaking that vase three and a half weeks ago. Apparently he called and told him to fire me. Mm hmm. So now so so she storms over to his house, slaps him. This is where the Mai Tai risk control thing actually pays off. She actually slaps him. <laughs> she slaps this actor so hard, he spends the rest of the movie nursing his cheek. He will not act. <laughs> also, she's supposed to be crying in this scene, and this actress is like, crying is smiling, right? Wet smiling? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> also, this is immediately followed by a being sad montage, and I mean this. If the sound editor of this movie reaches out, I will teach you gain balance for free. <laughs> I will teach oh. you how to do it. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. The worst song ever contest gets a new contestant as we watch everybody be oh sad for a bit. God, this song. Someone was like, heard a Tom Waits song. was like, you know what? I could probably do that. Oh, <laughs> Ugh. I just got to start smoking, right? So, <laughs> then, so get a gravelly voice. And by the way, this montage, this sadness montage, because they didn't know how to cut the song down or anything, apparently, right? They couldn't figure out how to make a shorter version of it. So they had to have as much montage as they had song. Mm -hmm. It was so bloated and just droned on for so long that Eli literally wrote a scene break into the middle of it. Okay. Yes. Well, that's because it fades a yes. little bit. And yes. you're like, oh, okay, so this is the end of the montage. They start talking over it, but no, they don't fade it out. I was like, wow, they are not fading that music entirely <laughs> they fade out. It back there in. are lyrics. <laughs> and then they fade it back in just so 
the fucking friend at the dentist can say, yeah, Eric's such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so important that that line got in there, guys. Oh, Christ. Okay, so then we get Eric, like, goes to her house, and he's like, hey, can I see Belle? And her dad's there, and he's like, no, and slams the door in his face, right? Yeah, he's like, thanks for losing me my job. Yeah, right. And so this is where, and because we have to eventually, like, have him figure out what happened. So Eric calls the dad's former boss and says, hey, there seems to be some mix-up. Did somebody call you and say that they were me? Because... Why the fuck would anyone do that? And also, why would I even think of it? Right? <laughs> why wouldn't you double check any part of this thing? Ah, it's fine. He's rehired. Yeah. All right. He's rehired. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so Bell comes home that night and finds out that Dad got his job back. Yeah. She also finds out that dinner was made for her, and I was so excited in this moment because I was like, okay, someone besides Belle made dinner. Yeah, it Dad's sense. unemployed. Dad's unemployed. We will find out that, no, his fucking daughter made dinner. The it was little Kelly. eighth grader had to make fucking dinner when he didn't have a goddamn job. <sighs> oh, I hate this dad so much. I hate this dad so much. I hate this dad so much. Sorry. So, and then, so, and so Dad got his job back, and then Kelly turns to Belle, and she says, Oh, hey, he called again, and she hands her a note, and I so wanted the note to just say, dry cleaning package is waiting at UPS store. <laughs> we didn't see the note. It might have said that. We don't know. <laughs> but dad's like, you know, uh, being fired sure has taught me a lesson. Your mother dying wasn't that big a deal because you sure stepped up. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and he concludes this scene by being like, you got to go off and do what makes you happy. Leave the state wherever you need to go. Just not here. Go. Go <laughs> <Yeah>. away. <laughs> Get out. Says, <laughs> says the guy who can't make dinner for himself. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> or pick up his kid from school. Yeah. Dad's brilliant fucking advice in this film to close it out. Like this is the last time we're going to see dad is find what makes you happy and then do that. Yeah, thanks, Dad, <laughs> for the fucking wisdom. Orthodontistry and an English degree wasn't enough, apparently. Yeah, exactly right. So, okay, so now she she finally answers Eric's call so that the plot can wrap up. Nope, sorry. Nope, ha, can't, nope. Fake, fake it. <laughs> She's still not going to let him explain anything. And then she hangs up. And, and I, I, I want to point out, because we have another conversation between her and her friend Anna, this movie, I'm pretty sure... Failed the Bechdel test the most times of any movie that we've <laughs> yeah, done. Movie we've literally done, yeah. every time the two of these people have a conversation, these two women, and it's like twelve times in this movie. Every time yep. they have a conversation, it's either about Craig or Eric, or her and her sister. It's always about how do you kiss a guy? What's yep. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yep. Right. So okay, and okay now though it's it's Act Three. We're deep into Act Three, so Eric can start mm. longingly staring at that alcohol bottle with the yep. alcohol in it. <laughs> yep. We get a little montage of him looking at the bottle that doesn't have a fucking label on it because that's what all booze companies do. They don't have a fucking label. No, so that's, you know what it is. It's blue brand alcohol. It's yes. weird old recycled olive oil bottle that someone's <laughs> mom had. Sure. And they took the label off of. And he's also sitting down on the couch like being sad and walking downstairs and not being able to yes. hold his own files. Oh my God. <laughs> they have this amazing, like he starts walking down the stairs and he has this, like there has to be a better way moment with his folders. <laughs> he drops all the, man, that man needs a trapper keeper. He drops the folders <laughs> everywhere. And, and what's so amazing about this is that they're trying to show that he sure does need his assistant because nobody can to carry, carry folders downstairs. <laughs> yeah, like Bell could. There's also this moment where he just like sits on the couch after that, like, God, I can't do anything by myself. And it pans over to the other couch and the Bible's just yes! sitting on it like, how does that make you feel? I'm a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> he just stares there forlornly at the wet Bible <laughs> sitting on the other couch. Yeah, this is where this actor will attempt to cry. Uh, his his attempt at crying, touching your hair. Touching your hair, <laughs> maybe sniffing. And your wounded cheek. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. All right, and then, okay, so he pulls down this mm -hmm. bottle. Now, the bottle is in, like, this glass box, right? It's like a glass-covered box. <laughs> and and in, in case of emergency of bottle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> 
you know, in, yeah, break in case of Act Three. So he God. he punches through the glass because that's in his contract too. And but we see his knuckles immediately afterwards. It's very obvious. He sugar <laughs> glass. I mean, really fine. wanted him to cut himself and bleed to death. She's like, oh, wow. <laughs> like oh. that last scene in marriage story or something. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So and and yeah. So he pulls out this bottle, and we're like, ooh, is he gonna rub it and find a genie? I mean. <laughs> Get some normal scotch like a good rich person. God. Yeah. Fucking asshole. Ugh. All right. So now we cut to Belle and her friend, the dentist office friend. They're having breakfast together. Now, apparently this is Craig's, you know, he's only has two strikes now or whatever. And she's contractually obligated to give him one last oh, chance. It's an ambush. Anna asked her out to, for lunch and she's like, I'm sorry. I invited Craig. She also says something that nobody has ever said in a diner. She says, the muffins are great here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I said, nobody at a diner. You only settle for muffins. Everyone always just said, you eat muffins because you're not allowed to eat good stuff. Exactly. All right. So then, okay, so they're waiting for Craig to show up at the diner. And she's, they're like, oh, fuck, there are six minutes left in this movie. We need to resolve this shit. So she goes, <laughs> hey, how did Craig know that my dad got fired from his job? For a break in the vase. And she's like, well, I don't know. He could only have known that if he had pretended to be Eric and called himself. Like she went from too dumb to think of speaking to a person to this Holmesian super sleuth and realizes <laughs> in an instant that he must have called her dad's work and pretended to be Eric. And just that Craig shows up and he's like, hey, guys, so what's up? And he starts drinking his juice and she's like. Did you get my dad fired? And I just wanted him to drink the juice for the rest of the movie. <laughs> just so I didn't have to answer that question. Craig, you're you're eventually gonna finish the juice and have to answer the question. Okay. <laughs> spitting it back into the glass. No, no, you're spitting no, it back into the glass. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so and then she he he admits that um he he was the one that called and got her dad fired. And so here it is. Time for Eli's best worst. She pushes him over, like out of the seat that they're sitting in. They're on a bench seat and he's sitting on the outside. So she pushes him out of her way. That is that character getting his comeuppance. That is yep. the creepy stalker who got her dad fired. Comeuppance. Yep. Yep. Well, revenge, well done, guys. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You were shoved. Nailed. And I you know there it. are still Craigs who are watching this movie before they named it, like, Mormon Vania, please watch this movie, <laughs> who were like, wow, I don't know why she was such a bitch to Craig in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> He's never been anything but nice to her. <laughs> the last time she thought someone, like, fired her dad, she slapped him. Right. And this time she's just like, yeah. no. Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ, right. Like, goddamn, Eric got more comeuppance for this than he did. That's amazing. <laughs> Maybe that was written in the fucking thing that she was supposed to slap him to, but after this actor saw what she did to Eric, he's like, no, fuck you. <laughs> no way. I will mm -hmm. leave. <laughs> she does not have stage combat training. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she she runs to the mansion to find Eric and he's not there. But damn it, his emergency liquor bottle has been punched open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're all like, where could he be? And she sees the picture of the mountain she didn't know was there. And uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, I have an idea. Yeah, there's only actually been one exterior shot in this movie that wasn't <laughs> my porch. So I bet he's there. <laughs> or a local park. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That we pretended was the ground. <laughs> and then, okay, but yeah, she finds him there sitting on his thinking log. Mm -hmm. He goes, she goes, what are you doing? He says, just thinking. And she's like, you sure that's the only uh, inking word that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got that bottle of strange. <laughs> no. But no, he picks it up and he dramatically throws it into the lake. He's like, I've been sitting here freezing my ass off for three hours waiting for somebody to come by so I could dramatically throw this fucking thing in a lake. <laughs> I'm so glad Heath doesn't have to see someone throw away perfectly good mystery olive oil alcohol. Into the lake. <laughs> That's why he had to take off. Actually, he did yeah, watch exactly. this movie. He was, he was triggered by this movie. And is this amazing moment? He, he turns to her and he goes, you make me want to be a better person person not man i didn't say man not copyrighted didn't take the good as it gets thing 
<laughs> wanted her to be like, you had me at how's it going? <laughs> yeah, right. No. And then he takes her by the hand and he goes, Belle, I want you to be my assistant still. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'll pay you this time. I'm sorry I exploited you for free labor. And then she goes, well, you know, I. I have another job and I, and I go to school. Remember, I was just doing this because you were going to get my dad fired. Right. You remember <laughs> that? Uh -oh. He's like, oh, no. I'm like, OK, well, what if we fucked and stuff? But but you could still carry my folders up and down stairs. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. I really can't handle that shit. Yeah. And she responds to that with basically I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just what every girl wants to hear. I was thinking maybe you could be my assistant for free. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for making me not a sociopath for a while. Also, I think I forgive God for killing my wife. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just Because the Bible's sitting next to him on the thinking log there. He's got it all figured out. And then they give the, they do that. They kiss and we get what uh, I can only it? describe as generic dinosaur reveal music behind it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it's a generic fucking kiss as well. It's pretty awful. It is. It's very awkward. And then that the lady, the narrator comes in. Mrs. Haygood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that Mrs. Haygood? Yeah. 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 She cuts back in to remind us that we've been going for a Beauty and the Beast thing this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like she's like, ha I thought she was just like an airline announcer because she has the same. Like, <laughs> they just like use the actress who did you have arrived at your destination. Like, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the end of the movie. They <laughs> held it happily ever after. And before you take off, your seats should be in a completely upright position. Like, <laughs> don't don't forget some of your memories will have shifted during the flight. So uh, we're opening the overhead bins. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. All right, so I'm not going to ask what the fuck any of this had to do with Beauty and the Beast. That's too big of a question. You guys are mortals. But <laughs> but do you have any theories as to what made them think it was related to Beauty and the Beast? The title. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they yeah. found the title. The title was given to them as a wedding gift. And, then <laughs> and they had to write a movie around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sure. Well, right. No, that makes perfect sense because his family got them one title. Her family got him a different title. They had to l pretend they liked <laughs> both of them equally. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. All right. OK. So, Anna, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And hey, why we got you here? If our listeners would like to hear more from you, say in album form, for example, ah. uh, where could they go? Well, I have an album on CD Baby, but it is also on all of the other like streaming the Spotify and the Apple music and all of that Amazon music, all that stuff. So just Anna Bosnick, the ring is the name of the album. Awesome. And I have a dog who has a social media account. She's pretty big on Instagram, much bigger than I am at Madge the pug, which apparently a lot of people have wanted to know about. So uh, please go follow her there as well. Oh, and my apologies for not <laughs> setting you up with the question. Okay. That's so okay. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Bell and the Beast, a modern search for a subtitle. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to muster up the will to do this again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. The Crossroads of Hunter Wilde live in Los Angeles. Oh, right. That's already. Yeah, this is uh, Chuck Norris's son's version of Amerigeddon. Oh, awesome. We've We've <laughs> encountered Eric before. He's kind of fucking amazing <laughs> alright so with that to look forward to we're going to bring episode 235 to a merciful close once again a huge thanks to Anna for hanging out with us today and an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among the ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review on iTunes and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist citation needed and the skeptic Crowd available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us some chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. With the Beast now fully settled down with Belle at his side, he had no more use for Mrs. Haygood. He released her son from his cage in the basement and they were free to go. <laughs> that mirror he broke was finally paid off. 
Belle's dad learned to watch where the fuck he was going. <laughs> Belle and the Beast, the Latter Day Tale, would be released in 2016 as White Power, and then again in 2018 as Funny Animal Videos, but Christian. <laughs> Morgan, you got to get an Oculus Quest, dude. It's the fucking, it's really fucking awesome. I want an Oculus Quest now. <laughs> oh, Anna, you got to get an Oculus Quest. It's so fucking cool. Um, you need, you honestly, you need it in about three and a half months because it makes me, it, 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 it's it's nauseating for me and, and sure. you know, I'm not pregnant. But yes, yeah, it's the coolest goddamn fucking thing. I, I want one very bad. I've always kind of wanted, I love VR. I just love VR. Yeah. Oh, I and like every a... <laughs> every little tiny fucking step of VR that VR has taken since 1993, I have followed along and gotten the fucking thing and shit. And it's finally yeah. like what you wanted in 1996, 95. I am a you know? sucker for a simulator. Like those are my favorite rides at all, like Universal. Yeah, and all that right, right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I fucking love that shit. When you can transport me somewhere else, this is amazing. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, it's 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 so cool. It's it. Yeah. The, the fucking I don't even need of- the porn. Like, that's just like an added bonus. Honestly, the porn isn't even that good. I mean, I'm going to like I'm going to incur the wrath of Heath when I say that. But they don't have like there's like 19 videos like there's it's all the same POV video. There's no good fucking porn. Yeah. You know, doing the lesbian POV. That was interesting once. But like no, none of the kink has made it onto there yet. So, yeah, eventually sure. they'll have great porn on there. But there's no kink. It's just all straight fucking. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of boring. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, it's just fucking. <laughs> yeah. That's also, just you can so, just see that on the Nature Channel. The thing, <laughs> <laughs> also, the thing least suited for 360 viewability is a porn set. Like it's impossible right. to look around those porns without seeing something absolutely heartbreakingly <laughs> tragic, like a mic boom or something like that. <laughs> a That's mic the least, boom? No, or no, like a, a fucking pack no. and play for her toddler. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. It's like a kid sitting there staring for laundry. Oh, Jesus. The pile of laundry that she put out of the way just like took off yeah. the bed. Jesus Christ. The best, though, is Ugh. the best is to see the cats. Do you ever see the, those uh, <gasps> collections of cats in porn? Porn cats? Yeah. Porn cats that are just sitting there not giving a fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I need to Google this after we're done. <laughs> They're amazing. That is okay. very funny. <laughs> all right, all right, sorry. Um. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2020, all rights reserved.